Hey everyone, Phil here. So I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I especially like the old school Star Wars. Exactly. Um, and I was really excited to find out that we were going to be able to put a bunch of Star Wars sounds in the SDK this year. So to make it so that everyone could use them and add some audio features to their robot or use them for indicating events that are happening during the game, uh, I wanted to make sure we could put a um, tutorial in the SDK as well. So that's what we've done. Uh, and so this video is a walkthrough of that code uh, and uh, so you can take the example, take the sample code, drop it down into your team code folder, build it and add it to your robot purely as a demo, like what this is that I'm running here. Roger, roger. Exactly. Um, and then modify it and customize it and add it to your own op mode. So, as a good friend of mine would say, may the force be with you. Well, let's get started here. So I've just opened up the standard SDK straight off the GitHub site. You can either download it or you can clone it to your desktop. And when we come in here, we see there's two modules and these are the robot controller and the team code. Robot controller is where all the samples and stuff are located and team code is where you'll be doing your work. The point to notice with the sound examples is that the sounds are already loaded as resources in the SDK and uh, not only are they loaded as resources but they're also used as part of the standard sounds so if I start up the robot controller give it a second to come up you'll hear its new sound and not only do they use it for starting up there's also the error and warning noises and the connect and disconnect noises there's the connect. R2D2 and BB8 getting together there. Okay, so with any example, any sample that you're using, the first thing you want to do is you want to copy it from the robot controller to the team code. So I'm going to open up the external samples folder, and if we scroll down here, you will see the two previous sound examples, one for Android Studios and one for Onbot Java. The first one uses resources and the second one uses Soundwave files on the phone. And the third example is our Skystone example, which is what we're going to work with here. So as always, we right click on here, we copy it. I'm going to drop this back and I'm going to open up team code. You want to go all the way down through Java down to the team code subfolder so you make sure your uh, sample goes in the right place. Right click and paste and it is going to ask you what you want to call it and you're going to give it a new name because you don't want two classes with the same names. So I'm going to call this demo start oops, wars Oh, bad spelling here. Demo Star Wars Sounds. Yeah. And you'll see that it has uh, created that in the team code folder. It's asking me if I want to configuration control this, and I'm going to say cancel. Now, if we start having a look here, uh, the Samples are very similar. There's always a descriptive section at the top and what this one's saying is we are going to create an op mode here which lets you uh, choose the sound that you want to play using the gamepad and then when you want to play the sound you can just click the right bumper button on the gamepad. We start off with a name and this is the teleop name that appears on the pull down list but it only appears if you go in and get rid of or comment out the disabled line. If you don't do this uh, your Op mode will get transferred to the phone, but it will not be on the list to play, so it won't do you any good whatsoever. Once we've done that, now we can have start having a look at the actual code. First thing we notice is there's an array of strings, and these strings are the resource names. These names happen to correspond to the WAV file name that was added to the SDK, and they all start with a SS underscore, which is uh, Skystone underscore and then the name abbreviation laser lightsaber power up things like that 
Then we also create a Boolean called sound playing, and this is going to be what we use to keep track of whether the sound is currently playing. One of the differences in this Opmo versus the original ones is that the original ones did not enforce the fact that you couldn't accidentally play the sound, same sound twice on top of itself. Whereas this code, once you start playing the sound, it will inhibit the ability to play the sound again. So that's a nice feature and it, and it keeps uh, you from tromping on top of yourself with multiple sounds. So we're going to use this flag to maintain that. So then we get into our run op mode. This is a linear op mode, so it's all done as one method, run op mode. Uh, we create some variables, an index to keep track of which sound we're playing out of this list, a sound ID, which is used to tell Android Studios which sound you're playing, and then a couple of booleans to keep track of whether we're currently pressing or not pressing the button on the D-pad. This will let us detect the edge at the actual point in time when you click the button versus the fact that the button is just being held down. One other uh, parameter that we create is the sound parameter, which we're going to pass to Android. And this is going to tell Android when we tell it to play a sound, should it repeat it or loop it? In this case, we say, no, don't loop it. And uh, there's some other parameters. That's really the main one. So then we just drop straight into the main while loop where we're looking to see what the user wants to do. Notice that we did not call wait for start here, and that was because this is just a test program. There's no nothing happening on the robot, no motion. So we can just drop straight into this. And our while loop, instead of being while op mode is active, we're actually using while not is stop requested. That means that you can either just manually hit stop straight away, or you can hit play and then hit stop afterwards and the op mode will stop running. Within this loop, there's two tests for navigating the list of options. And what we're doing here is we're using the D-pad up and down buttons to change our selection. And we're going to display that selection on the screen of the driver station using telemetry statements later on. So we really have two buttons. We have a D-pad down and a D-pad up. D-pad down wants to circulate through the list of available sounds in the forward direction. So what we want to do is we want to take the sound index, which is keeping track of what sound we want to play, add one to it, and then we're going to do a modular divide with the length of that array. And what this will do is it'll cause the index to wrap around. So if there were five elements in the array, the index would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then back to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and loop. So you can just circulate in the forward direction. Likewise, the second piece of code here is looking to see whether you're pushing up on the D-pad. One thing in both of these, the first line here, it's, it's looking to see whether you're pushing the button, and it's ending that with the fact that the button was not pressed last time around this loop. And what this is doing is it's saying, am I, am I pushing the button? And last time around was I not pushing it, which means if, that, if those conditions are both true, it means that I have just pushed the button. So that one click point in time, I'm going to activate uh, this moving index. If we didn't have this test in here, you'd push the button down and the and it'd loop ran, 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 ran really fast. We don't want that. Another something here that's a little bit different is when we're cycling backwards through the list, we're decrementing the index counter. But we can't just do the same piece of code with a minus one here, because once you go negative, modulo divide doesn't work quite the same way you'd expect. So what I do here is I take the current index, I add the total number of sounds to it, then I subtract one, and then I do the modulo divide. And this will let it go 43210, 43210 every time the button's clicked. So that's just a little user interface menu thing that we've got going there. And this is actually kind of useful for doing stuff with your autonomous as well, where you can change your selection before you actually run your autonomous program. All right, finally, here's where we play the sound. This is where it gets a little bit more interesting. We are going to look at the right bumper on the gamepad, and we are only going to act, activate this code here if we're currently not playing any sound. So this is our way of preventing us from, from pressing it multiple times or, or just repeating the sound. And we'll see where this gets set and cleared a little bit later. But it starts off being false. So the first time through, as soon as the bumper gets hit, it'll do this code. And in this code, it does a few checks and a few things. It basically looks up the 
the resource ID for the sound we want to play. Sounds sound index here is looking up the name of the sound, and then we're saying get identifier. So we're saying look up and find the resource identifier for this named raw resource, and then it puts it into sound ID, and then it checks to make sure it's not equal to zero because if it couldn't find the resource, it would have a value of zero. So if it's not zero, then it's safe to play the sound. And the first thing we do is we say, okay, let's set sound playing equal to true, which means, okay, we're about to play the sound, so let's say we're playing it, and then we will go ahead and play it. And that's what this last line here does. This is um, using the start playing method, which has four parameters. Uh, it needs the context for the app, it needs the ID of the sound it's going to play. It needs the parameters for how to play it. And we set that up earlier so we know it won't loop. It'll just play once. And then there's two more parameters. This, the, the next one is a callback for when it starts playing. And the final one is a callback for when it stops playing. And that's what we're going to use. Now, this is actually condensed down here. If I hit this little plus, it'll expand it out. And what this is doing is it is passing in a little method that can be called when the sound is finished playing and that's what and when it's called it will set sound playing equal to false so this is our way of saying well, we're going to say sound playing is true start playing and when it's finished playing set sound playing back to false so that way we maintain that only one sound is being played at any time and that's the code there that plays it then finally we want to keep track of the d-pad uh, state is it up or down each time round, and we so we read the state and we save it for next time round, and then we just use some t telemetry statements to prompt the user for what he needs to do, what she needs to do. In this case, there's two lines that say use the D-pad up and down to choose the sound, press the right bumper to play the sound, and then what it'll do is it'll display the sound that's currently selected from that array, and then it'll play, it'll show whether the sound is playing or not. It'll either say playing if this is true or it'll say stopped if it's false and we can have a look at that once we build it okay let's go ahead and build this thing now so I hit my my play my build and there's my phone and I say okay this is a good time to check to make sure you didn't forget to disable turn off the disable I'm going to zoom in on the phone now so we can see what's going on here. All right. It is installing the APK. Oh, I like to get rid of the running one before the new one starts. And launching. better do this quickly because I only got 4% left. So I'm going to select that program. I'm going to hit init and you'll see down here it's showing me the prompt and it's telling me that SS alarm is selected but it's currently stopped. I'm going to get my controller. I'm going to do a start A so I can see my user is set here and now I can circulate through. So I'm now pressing the down button on the d-pad. You see my options are changing here. And push the up and get to Darth Vader and I'm going to push the button here let's see it change to stop and hit it again if I hit it multiple times nothing really happens so I can go down and select something else So there you go. Samples work uh, as indicated. If you want to start playing with some other sounds, then I recommend you go back to the um, uh, other samples in the robot controller. And you see how to build your own samples, either uploading the files to your computer and putting them in Android Studio or uploading them to the phone and running them as a file. 
and either of the two examples here are good, are good examples for that. So all I have to say is, may the force be with you, and uh, off you go.